What's going on, all my fantasy basketball fans out there? It's Waver Wire Queen, and welcome to the Score Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today, I'm going to give you some players you should consider picking up via the Waver Wire. Remember that these players are players that can help you in the short term. Some of these guys do not have long term value, however, they should be able to help your team immediately. Also keep in mind that these recommendations that I'm giving you, I'm also using for my own team because yes, Wave Wire Queen may give you advice, but she loves playing the game of fantasy basketball as well. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more of the Score Fantasy Basketball podcast so you can stay in touch and connected so you have great advice so you can stay ahead of your competition in fantasy basketball. Let's give you that advice on players. Let's go. So the first player on this list is going to be Dort. Lugens Dort. Hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Nonetheless, it's a guard forward starting for OKC. Now, he's not shooting a high percentage from the field. He's only shooting 38.6% from the field. But nonetheless, that is fine. He is still a great ad. He's averaging 11 points on the season, three rebounds, two assists. He is definitely good for a points-based league. And in the Yahoo platform, he's rostered at 28, um, 39%. So if you are using the Yahoo platform, he is a great, great ad because he should be able to help your team immediately. And he actually has some long-term value because he is uh, a part of that rebuild, which is going on out there in OKC. So if you are able to pick him up, pick him up because he can help your team throughout the season. Killian Hayes. So let's talk about it. So uh, the Detroit Pistons drafted this young kid to be one of the building blocks of their uh, franchise, and he's definitely a part of their rebuild. He is starting to see his minutes increase this season. Kind of started out on the low side. Now you're starting to see those minutes uh, creep up into the mid to high range in the 20s, and he's starting to, to play better. So he's definitely a player you can uh, – take on in a fantasy dynasty league. So if you're in a dynasty league, he is a player that I would consider adding right now. If you are in a redraft league and it's not a deep league, then I wouldn't touch him. But in a dynasty league, he's a player I would consider picking up as part of my rebuild. Um, in a Yahoo format, he is rostered at 12%. And again, those minutes are starting to increase, and that means he's going to have more opportunity to start producing for Detroit like they expected. And also, they're getting their stud number one pick back. So that should also help Hayes out a bit, too. So look forward to seeing all that go down and seeing how that team uh, starts to grow and gel together. Right, let's talk about the 76ers. So you know they're out, out there playing without Ben Simmons, right? Yes, yeah, so Ben is not playing. I knew that was going to happen. So um, Shake Milton is a great ad. He's going to be in the mix. He's coming off the bench, and he's uh, going to produce – for the 76ers. He played well uh, for the most part last season, and you'll see that again this year, and he should have more uh, opportunities since Ben isn't playing. So I want to see his minutes go up because he's definitely capable of helping that team out. Doc's going to have to realize that, hey, sometimes you're not going to be able to just rely on the guys that you've been relying on the last several years. You got to start letting some of these other guys play, and Milton is definitely – one of those guys that should be in the mix. He's only played one game this season and he played 16 minutes and he had 13 points, five assists and um, one rebound. So that is good for a small sample size. And I expect to see more. I do want to see those minutes creep up to 20 minutes, maybe 24 minutes a game. And then you'll start seeing more consistency with those 13 points and a few assists and maybe chipping in with a, a, a few more rebounds. So he is definitely good value in a deep league for a points-based league. Definitely points-based league. Let's keep it going on, y'all. Let's talk about Josh Hart. One of the guys I mentioned um, this past uh, preseason as one of a 
players who have the potential to be a breakout player for the Pelicans. Right now, he's kind of dealing with uh, injuries in and out of the lineup. Nonetheless, you stay the course with him because he has the potential to be that guy that's going to get you nine between nine and um, 12 points per game, maybe get you six, seven rebounds and a few assists and play solid defense, which is going to accumulate to some steals and some blocks. So he's going to do several different things for your team, which is something you, you want, you want to, um, your wing player that you have on your team to be able to do multiple things. So he's actually adding value to your team because he's able to produce in multiple categories, multiple statistics here. So yes, the injuries are nagging him right now. Nonetheless, you pick him up and put him on your bench and, and you'll start to see uh, later on in the season, once he's fully healthy, that, okay, this was definitely a good pickup. The points will be there. The rebounds will be there. And then other categories like steals, blocks, and some assists. That's the kind of player you want on your team because those are the players who are the glue of your team and help you win your league. Let's talk about Darius Baisley. Yes, forward with the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's right. He's averaging 11 points and six rebounds per game and he's only shooting a little over 39 percent from the field he's not going to shoot a high percentage from the field so if you're looking for this guy to come out here and light it up 45 percent 50 percent from the field it's not going to happen however he's going to get you some points and some some rebounds so points based league is all i'm checking for with him because his Field goal percentage is going to hurt you in the categories, basically, because he's not going to get over 40 percent on most nights. OK, volume shooter, um, not a great shooter. However, the points will be there and uh, the rebounds will be there. I want to see those points go up from 11 to at least uh, 15. He should be able to do that because he is in the mix and starting for the team. And then I want to see those six rebounds jump up to about eight capable of doing that right now kind of slow start to the season I expect him to pick it up a little bit more with the points and the rebounds and that should help your team however he should be someone you have on your bench if you want to uh, wait around and let someone else in your league pick him up go on and do so but I recommend that you pick him up especially in a dynasty league and just put him on your bench if if, if you have the um the roster spots because he's a a, a nice long-term value and a long-term player who should be able to help your team this season. So definitely check for Darius Baisley. Okay. Let's talk about Royce O'Neal. So Royce O'Neal is going to do a bunch of different things and not, uh, uh, and at high, high rate. And, and, and what I mean by that is he's going to get you some points, but it's not going to be 15, 20 points. It may be about five, six, six points a game. And that's what he's doing right now, giving you five points per game, four and a half rebounds, one and a half assists, and one and a half uh, steals per game, which is not bad. However, that's not a player you want to leave on, on waivers, especially in a deep league. In a deep league, you're looking for players who can get you that 18 to 20 fantasy points on a night where, say, one of your top guys is, is off or they're out due to injuries, low management. These are the kind of players who will help you win a week where somebody you expect it to be available to you is not available that week. So someone like Royce O'Neal, who's averaging between 18 and 20 fantasy points, or he's going to get you that each night is a player that you want in a points-based league all the way at the end of your bench. So you can utilize him when you need to. And he's one of those players that if you don't want to keep him on your bench, he's a player that you can play uh, insert in your lineup when you need him for a few days, if you want to get rid of him. Want to do so, but just keep in mind somebody else may uh, pick him up and they're not going to release him because it's hard to find 18 to 20 points per night in a deep league. All right, so let's talk about Derek Favors. That's why right, y'all, Derek Favors out here still balling. Yes, he is. So he's playing some minutes out there. They're in a rebuild in OKC. He actually started against Lakers and he had a good game. He had 15 points and he had a few rebounds and he played well. So I'm not sure if he's going to start the remainder of the season, but he's someone that I would keep my eye on. And if you need um, a center just to play and fill in for you on a night and he's starting, then you can expect him to get you uh 
close to a double double. So if you need a player for a game at center and there's no one else and Derek Favors is out there and you know that he's playing and he's going to start, then you can take a chance on him and he should help your team for that night. He's not someone I would keep on my bench long term unless you see that OKC is serious about him being their starting center for the season, which I don't think that's going to happen long term. He looks like somebody they're trying to uh, showcase as potential trade bait, but guess what? Right now, we're going to be in a mix. We're going to use him for whatever he's doing and then move on from him once he is no longer producing. So if you need a one-night rental at center and Favors is starting and playing, go on and pick him up. Eric Bledsoe. Yes, that is right, y'all. Eric Bledsoe is on this list, and he's on this list because he's playing uh, some minutes with, with, with the Clippers. Clippers are kind of up and down right now. He's playing about 26 minutes per game, getting 10 points, uh, a little over three and a half rebounds, four assists, and he's shooting about 37% from the field. I expect to see the 37% field goal percentage to go up a little bit more. It really needs to. However, he's a player that you can uh, utilize on nights where your starters are not playing or out due to injuries, COVID protocol, whatever's going on, or load management, because you know how we feel about that load management, y'all. You know how we feel about load management. Ah, we love it. But nonetheless, um, he's a player who can help your team too as well. Like these guys on this list of players who can help your team on most nights when you have players who are off, because the goal is you want to keep – keep uh, getting those points, especially in the points-based league. Some of these guys are not good for categories-based leagues based on some of the things they do. If you notice that the player has a terrible field goal percentage, even if he's bringing you rebounds, he's going to bring your score down in the categories-based league, and you're not, not going to win that those points on field goal percentage if that is one of the categories because they're going to shoot a really bad field goal percentage. That's kind of like with, with a base league. To me, he's not – good for um categories basically because he's not going to shoot a high percentage and okay so what you want to use his um six rebounds no you can go get someone else who's going to shoot a good field goal percentage and is going to at least give you the rebound so don't be desperate just because he may get you six seven rebounds you can get somebody who can do the rebounds and be more efficient when they are scoring the ball. All right, y'all, make sure you hit the like button and go on and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay connected to the show and make sure you are staying ahead of your competition so we can win our fantasy basketball league because that is the goal, okay? Make sure you leave some comments and questions regarding this um, show and also any questions you may have on fantasy basketball. Again, also check out our um, fantasy football content. If you love fantasy football, go and check us out on the Wave of Wire Queen YouTube channel. We have great content on fantasy football. If you're a fan, great advice. All right, y'all, make sure you subscribe for more of the Score Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Peace.